meal. So let's start because I have to introduce you first. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are a returning subscriber, what's up? And if you're new, please hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. Today on CC's face, not only do I have one of my favorite people. Uh, Zaleka, please introduce yourself to my studies. Hi guys, I'm Zoleka. And that's it. <laughs> okay, guys, so this is my friend Zaleka. Uh, background, guys, sorry, I'm busy burning. Yes, I wanted to preheat a couple of stuff so that when we start, but anyway, a uh, brief story I met Zaleka in varsity, who she's become a sister now as well. Like, the best times. Like, the when life was so nandy, guys. Like, life was so. Today, we're just going to be cooking a very easy meal. As you can see, I don't even have a lot of ingredients here. I literally have potatoes and lamb chops. Uh, so we're gonna be making lamb chops and mash. The only difference with the mash is that it's gonna have some caramelized onions, which gives it a nice twist to it. Um, and as we're doing that, we're just gonna discuss life. So my friends are like here is a mof. If you <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. My so friend, she is one of the hottest mothers I know. Um, yeah, she's a young mom, and we're just gonna talk about being a young mother. And yeah, so let's get cooking and talking. <laughs> Um, if you can't make mash, then you really can't cook. But here, <laughs> no instructions for this. But I put some um, chopped potatoes. You guys can put whole potatoes if you want to. But I think um, for an even texture, I literally chop them into small pieces. Also cooks faster. In here, I'm going to brown my chops. As you might, if you know on my Instagram, please follow me on Instagram, guys. See his face. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I am an advocate for browning your meat before you further do whatever you want to do with it. So if you're making stew, brown it first. If you're making chops, brown it first. Um, I'm only browning these chops because I'm going to be putting them back in the oven. So as I'm doing that, also I'm just going to briefly um, put some salt and pepper. And then this is going to boil and then my lovely friend over here is going to cut onions for me. Uh, this is going to go with the mash. So friend, Talk to me about when you found out you were pregnant. Uh, you were like, what, 21? Hey. I was 21. Joke, yeah. I remember it like yesterday. Hey. It literally, guys, I swear, I remember going to the hospital with my friend. He was so young. I remember we took a taxi. We went to Melbourne <laughs> and we went to Mediclinic. Oh, what's it called? What? Medicross. 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 We went to Medicross. And we sat in that room and the doctor was there confirming it with the oh, the sonogram. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, my friend, you are pregnant. Like, like and I think that's the same time when we found out that it was a boy. Yeah, yeah, that's what we found out. That's far along. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, take it back. How has the journey been as a 21-year-old who is in varsity, who comes from a good school, who is obviously expected to carry this whole you know, you're supposed to graduate and then find a job and then get married and then have a child. That's what's obviously expected from home, you know? Yeah. Um, and then there you are, this young, ambitious, beautiful girl. And now you have to tell Kohai Hore, nah guys, I've been doing the most. <laughs> Actually, it was, I found out in December 2015 yeah. that I was expecting. Yeah. And obviously it came as like a shocker. First, I obviously took the test yeah. before, right? Yeah. And then when we went to the doctor, that's when we found out everything, yeah. the sex of the child, yeah. and everything like that, you know? But, like, going home wasn't that bad, it wasn't that bad at all, because what had happened was, I think also, I think growing up as feisty as I was, yeah, um, and as opinionated, and outspoken as I was, <laughs> mind you, my friend is a journalist, so... <laughs> If you want it, she's as opinionated as opinionated gets. <laughs> so it was, yeah, so I was at that point, I think also, even in high school, my parents were just like tired of me. Like, yeah. I was always fighting with my parents. I was always fighting with my parents. Like, yeah. I was always fighting with, and I think also my, I think my parents thought I had a problem with authority. Yeah. Because yeah. even at school, like I had one or two incidents. Do you like, not you think, just, like, do you not think you... To a certain degree, not have a problem with authority, but you are very what I say is I say and that's it. Yes, there's okay. no like <laughs> in between. Okay, let's not. No, it's we're like, not, yeah, so we're I not say this, 
I it's fine yeah. 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 And also I I think okay, that's one of my flaws, I suppose, man. I think it can be a flaw and a strength at the same time. Because a lot of people are so easily walked over because yeah, yeah. they don't have that yeah, yeah. This is what I'm saying and I'm yeah. sticking to it. Right. Shortly after I gave birth in July, mm. in August, um, I was supposed to be one of those um, something at 
the IEC. You yes, know, when yes. We hear, um, when voting, we hear voting like times, yes. yes 20, you know? 2016. It was 2016. It was August 2016. Weren't we every four years? No, but I think it was... Um, like regional. regional. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. Yes, right. So at that point, I remember I had... Because I got this gig, like, shortly after, I think, or oh, maybe even before. Yeah. I think even before I gave birth, mm. right? And I knew that in August, this is going to be the little money that I make, mm. you know, to kind of push, right? And I remember, guys... My boobs are so so. I can feel it now. My oh. boobs are so so. Yeah. I was wearing. I think it was cold at, at the time. I was wearing so many jackets. Plus, I was wearing the IEC T-shirt mm. and stuff like that. And literally, you could see the milk penetrate through sure. all those layers. Sure. You know, like you know. And fine. It that was that. And then after that, um, I got another gig, which I had gone to while I was pregnant. And that that was the one thing my mom was just like, "There's no way," because. They don't hire you when they see that you're about to pop yeah. bread. And I got that gig, you know. So it could have only been God. Yeah. I didn't last, it didn't last that long, mm. the whole thing, because it was just for elections and yeah. stuff like that, right? Um, so it was that. And then after that, I, okay, it was, okay, fast forward, I popped, stuff like that. Mm. Then I got the SABC. It was just like one thing after the other, one thing after the other. <laughs> like literally, it had to be God. Yeah. Guys, you know? So, cool. after the day. Stop. Okay, guys, sorry, we had a little technical error and I didn't show you the process. But anyway, here I had up red, red wine vinegar, some chili flakes, some. You know this one thing? How do people pronounce this? I see my baby. Oregano. Some people say oregano. <laughs> what? Anyway, uh, we have some of that inside, um, a bit of peri peri, some honey, and yeah, that's it. So this is the sauce that's gonna go into the chops. Why I like this is because it gives you a sweet and sour, well, yeah, sweet and spicy type of taste to the chops, which is really amazing. I think the honey brings out that kick. Yes, my baby. The honey brings out that. And here, my friend wanted a salad. Obviously, you can't have a bomb as body without like maintaining. <laughs> So here we have some mixed uh, slaw. It's really a fave. It's literally ready made. Easier salad. We're putting in some avocado and then we're going to add in some sour cream chives, which is a thick um, sauce, which is just going to give it a nice feel. Obviously, seasoned with salt and pepper. And that's it. So, friend, you were telling us quickly about. <coughs> Sorry. Fast forward. Woo! Guys, fast. Okay, my love. Check out the bed, my baby. So now, Seleka, so you are gonna tell us. Fast forward four years later, you are now a mother of a beautiful four-year-old. Um, guys, that beautiful is not. When I say beautiful, I mean it in all facets. Like he is just an amazing child. Um, so yeah, you're now a mother to a four-year-old. You had to do the whole three years alone as a single parent. How has that journey been from where you are? then from where you were then to where you are now i think for me i had like a very supportive i have a strong support structure yeah like i have i don't take that for granted like at all you know and like just the other day i was struggling with something and my mom was saying we have to have each other's backs because she came through for me so quick mm. you know so I think my support structure like has kept me through all, and not even forgetting Lolo guys. Lolo's Lolo's sister's godmother. Yes. Right. Best thing. And real definition of a best friend. And literally, she's there throughout. Like even yeah. in situations where you think that she doesn't necessarily have to be there. Yeah. Because you know? I know when people when I say you support structure, you automatically think family, family. Yes. and stuff like that. You know? But again, friends are you get certain friends who you then make family, you yes. know? Where you can't categorize them as friends yes. anymore. Yeah. Yes. And I think Lola is one of those people for you. So she definitely comes to Yes, baby. You can't hear it. Come let me help you. No, you come here, baby. Come let me help you. Sorry guys, we have to shoot and we have a child, so <laughs> this is not gonna be smooth. Yeah, it's not smooth sailing. But anyway, this is almost done. I'm just gonna pour it onto the chops. Sorry to have interrupted you, my friend. So yeah, like I think my support structure has really come through for me. Yeah. Sometimes like my dad is also so very clingy. 
you know everyone is clinging to Cece. everyone <laughs> to see, everyone is Cece's mother or father <laughs> like guys like, it's it's actually crazy. guys so, this yeah, is so good i'm sorry this was so nice i wanted to taste it I, it might be a bit too pungent but tell me what you think That have already been pre-cooked i'm just gonna apply the sauce to it and then we are done season on my face so friend what are your last sentiments around you know being a young mom still pursuing your career new relationships and all of that by the way she's just finished this beautiful salad guys look at my friends like yes girl <laughs> clap for yourself i'm just gonna quickly be doing the caramelized onions for the mash and then we're done so yes friend you were saying um so for me i think i don't know i think you know I, guys i know it might sound a little like cliche or something like that, but i remember going to a school camp you know and they were saying that people literally fear pregnancy more than they fear sexually transmitted diseases yeah you know, which is wild like you look like guys like <laughs> for me and the thing is that I know not everyone is meant to be a mom. Not everyone wants to be a mom, you know. Not everyone wants to be a parent. But for me, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I have a lot of accomplishments. So, sure. but it's the best thing that's ever happened to me, yeah. you know. And I can still accomplish many things, but nothing will ever compare to that. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Literally, like I can accomplish all the other things, but literally. Nothing compared to being a mom. Nothing beats that. Yeah. Nothing beats it, you know. So for young girls out there who might be in a similar predicament where they feel like, okay, my life is gonna come to an end, what advice would you give them going forward? And not just in terms of, you know, motherhood, but like relationships, you know, like when you're a single mother, it's yeah. like you, people have the thing of no man's gonna wanna marry me, I'm not gonna get in a relationship. Um, I'm gonna be like a baby mama forever. Ah, guys, can I tell you that thing is the worst thing to listen to, you know? Like, sorry, because I am very really confident, and you know, I don't. And personally, for me, I I don't do the whole. I don't wallow in my sorrow. Mm -hmm. I know. I don't wallow in my sorrow. I don't anything like that, you know. So for me, I know, like, because. God has proven himself before, he's going to prove himself again. You know what I mean? So for me, I don't... Right there, right there. I don't... Guys, there are so many men out there, you know? Too many! There are so many men out there. And I saw a tweet saying for um, most of them. <laughs> they say that there are a lot of fish in the sea, but most of them are sardines. <laughs> something like that and that is true that, that is, is true that is true yeah but i think there are a lot of genuine men out there you mm -hmm. know and i have been lucky to find myself such yeah such a man yeah. yeah so for me like for i know yes baby you can't open it my baby you can't open it okay you know so you can't open it my baby it doesn't open it doesn't open So I've been fortunate to have spent like a better part of 2020 mm. doing this with someone else. Yeah. You know, someone that's reliable, someone I know that I can trust my son's head with. Mm. You know, like I know that he's in it, you know. So I don't even think like for me the thing is that I wasn't even looking for anything. You know, I wasn't looking for anything at all yeah. because being single is the bomb.com. <laughs> like, I beg to differ, but I beg to differ. <laughs> being single is the best thing because yeah. literally, it's like that's what I guys, that's what I always say that 
happiness starts with yourself like it doesn't mean like anyone else yeah. like you know yeah like i was happy and then that's why i invited a good love into yeah my life. basically you are what you attract so if you find yourself happy and you're doing life for yourself you'll find someone who's gonna be in the same boat and just add on to it as your partner has done in your life you know yeah and he's been really really good i mean we spent the better part i mean also like i i try to be a little kind to him sometimes because yeah. i know that it's something that he's never done before. Kind of, it's not easy to just step into being a father without and you actually being the father you know what I mean? yeah so he's and the thing is that cise absolutely loves him yes. you know and he tries new ways to connect with cise yeah. you know, things like that and to make sure that we are the family that he envisions that's so beautiful really cool. so i i like that's my advice to people don't even think about anyone else focus on yourself yeah you know i didn't even think that like four years down the line i'd be engaged and you know doing See, that's <laughs> Here we are now. God comes through, guys. God comes through. Guys, that was my beautiful friend who is soon going to be a Makoti, you know? <laughs> Just to show you guys, and I think for me it's encouragement that how you start is not how you finish. I just need everyone for that to sink in. Like, how you start is not how you finish. And God has a plan for everyone. In the, He's appointed time, things are going to happen. And I'm just, thank you for coming. It has been such a you. pleasure. Um, guys, so right now, I know we're still cooking as well, but right now the match is almost done. So what I'm going to do here is add just a little bit of salt um, and some balsamic vinegar because we did put olive oil. So as you can see, the onions now have already kind of, you know, become caramelized -y. After you put some balsamic vinegar, then they're going to look proper and taste proper with some salt. And then I'm just going to mix it in the mesh and I'll show you guys the end product when we're done. Oh yes, and the lamb chops are in the oven cooking. Yeah. So, thank you guys. I'll show you the end product in a few. <laughs> yes, my baby. It's a treasure. Yeah, it's a treasure box. A treasure box. Yes. Guys, we have a kid in the room. Anyway, so let's go on to the salad, you know. Obviously, when you have a fun as bun like this. <laughs> quickly it's very easy i'm gonna be using um it's a it's a slow it's more of a coarse slow so it's very easy this is ready made which i love from more so we're just gonna put this we're gonna cut some avocado and then add my favorite sour cream and chives dressing to it so that's the salad we're gonna have on the side which is quick easy to the point loves it and what i'm gonna be doing here for you guys is making a dressing for the chops so I'm just going to explain to you what's going on and then we're going to continue talking to Zoe. Um, here I'm just going to mix in some red wine vinegar. If you can see that. So I'm going to mix some red wine vinegar with some chili flakes, with some peri peri and a little balsamic vinegar and some honey. I know it sounds like a very weird sweet chili concoction but I promise you it's absolutely divine please try it out tell me how it is in the comments let me know if you like it if it's a nay yay but we'll also ask Zoe to be the final judge at the end of the day so yes friend so cool found out you're pregnant you let your parents know you're young you're 22 and you don't got a job you're like okay what next one o one day what yeah. is the next step i think after that it was in i'm gonna be working for so it was in July 2016. Yeah. Okay. Best day of my life. And then you can chop um, this. What happened? Oh, at the time. Oh, then I would start the SAPC thing shortly afterwards. Yes. Afterward. Amazing. So when I started at the SAPC, I think he was like six months. Yeah. Which was like. I wanted to be home longer than that, but I understood what was at stake. Yeah, you know. So, so you're a young mom, and you're also getting your career in order. Yeah, and you're also getting your life in order. Yes, all at once, at the same time. Sure. And the thing is that I can't sleep. That's the thing. You can't. I can't because you're not also, doing life for you anymore. But also, I think also for me, the thing is that even without a child, I was just like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just like, guys, I was just like, this is what I want. 
and this is what I am going to get. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I have my fault without a child. I think the thing is that I think people think that a child, or maybe it is for certain people, yeah. right? When that a child is like your driving force. Yeah. You know? For me, it wasn't like that at all. That's it's just like yeah. I just wanted to succeed. Yeah, not for anyone else, but, but for myself. Am. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yes, my baby. Yes, my love. It's a treasure box. Yes. Yes, you can do whatever you want with it, my love. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, friend. Sorry about that. So yeah. Um, yeah, so that's my thing. Like, I just wanted to succeed for myself because even before the SABC, I already started working. Yes, <laughs> the best part of my life, yeah. guys. I would be on a you know, like we really worked for a dope ass company. Um, funny enough, she put me on my first job. We were in same faculty, different fields. Um, and she was interning at a very reputable um company, well, NGO, I think. And yeah, they had a vacancy, and as she was there, she was like, friends, send in your CV, and I sent in my CV. We were very young, 21. Um, sent in my CV and got the job, and we had the privilege of working together. Beautiful job that entailed traveling and life and enriching you and growing you. And But that's a story for another day. One day I'll do a careers tag, and yeah, we'll talk about <laughs> the spirals. But yes, friend, you were saying? So yeah, um, I had already started working, so for me... And I think I was I'm just like naturally driven. So that like the child thing for me wasn't like um train smash. Yeah, it wasn't like you have to succeed for the child because I was already focused on succeeding. Yeah, Tante. You know? That's what I love to hear. So for me it was just like focus like I my focus never shifted. Yeah. You know? Sure. Like I was still thinking. So you worked at the SABC, you started your journalism career in full force. Yeah. Um and what's happening now? now Cisse is like this is fast forward this is like four years later now we are Cisse is turning four years he turned four two yeah. three months ago yeah. and he is you'll see him quickly Cisse come here quickly I want you to show I want you to show my I, I want you to show my youtubers come here quickly come 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 let's see I'm talking about can show his oh yes come that's a rosary do you like it come see say show everyone say hi to say hi to my youtuber say hi welcome to okay guys now i'm i'm gonna my mash is finally done i don't know why i took longer than usual but here i have salt and pepper in my mash what i'm gonna do is start mashing it and then obviously we all love some creamy mash you're gonna put some milk Guys, I buy these little milks because living alone, you can't buy like a carton of milk because it then gets rotten. So anyway, you add some milk there. If you want to indulge some more, you can obviously put some butter. But I think I'm just going to put some milk. But I usually put some butter. But I'm just going to put some milk. So while I'm crack, um, mashing that, I'm going to add in my caramelized onions. Oh, my pan is hot. Cool. And then I'm just going to mix all of that together. Mind you, this is the first time I'm trying this, but I have had it at a restaurant before. Um, if you guys go to Dopio Zero, they sell their pork belly um, with caramelized mash in it. And it's just amazing. So I thought, hey man, why not try it for myself? So yeah, guys, that is how we are making our mash.